all right let's continue our thing so milestone two is done this is part two of the of the lecture for today uh, any questions before we start for anything Dan go ahead Dan you have a question Dan, you said yes. Uh, your uh, microphone is not working, Dan. Everyone, we have that testing at the beginning for this problem. So at the beginning, it gives you a test and it says, can you hear the echo? If you can't hear the echo, you did not set it properly. So make sure you do that. Dan, if you want to, you can disconnect your audio uh, by clicking on here and come back in and this time try the echo and make sure everything is good and set your audio properly still I can't hear you you can type it in a chat uh, there's no problem but um, just uh, we, we, yeah no problem go ahead So, oh, okay, you're typing the question. <clears throat> uh, right after we what we left off. So the last quiz, whatever it was on, it's going to be after that. And for the quiz, and thank you very much for the question that you're asking. So we're going to have classes with resources. So uh, what for the quiz, um, um, it's going to be it's not going to be multiple choice for this one. I specifically because I had lots of trouble marking your uh, tests. Uh, I'm going to make this one actually a programming quiz, which means I'm going to ask you to actually write small pieces of program for me. But I, as you see, I have removed the demo test. So I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to allow you to uh, run Notepad++ to develop your code in there. I'm going to demo it, how it's done, and you have to follow that step. So I'll, again, I'm, I'll provide you with a YouTube video exactly like before. You click on it, you see exactly how it works, and then you start doing your, your uh, demo for test. And I'm going to have that demo marked as a quiz. So what I will do, I'm going to actually write uh, a classes with resources part example. I'll do it for you. I want you to repeat it after me. And then for the quiz in class, you're going to have another question coming up for classes with resources, which you're going to do again. So you're going to have a practice run first, and then you're going to have the real quiz in the, in the, in the uh, lab. Are we okay with this? Any questions on this? So, yeah, today these are the things that I'm going to do. First, I'm going to post the workshop, then I'm going to uh, create the demo and give it to everyone so they can actually see the demo and see how... Uh, I, I made it easier for you to be able to do the programming part, so it's syntax highlighting and all this stuff. Uh, so. Um, I'll put the demo so you can practice as many times as you want. And when you do that, you're going to get marked for it as a quiz. Uh, Niran, go ahead. You have a question. Somebody's calling me. Uh, sorry, sir. It uh, by mistake gone to yes instead of no. Oh, okay. Uh, and yeah, I, and I have busy in my status and people still call me. I can't believe it. So let me just... Let me just uh,
all right okay sorry about that it was actually Seneca staff so I had to answer the question somebody uh, wanted to say something so anyways all right uh, all right so uh, now that we are done with that let's and thank you very much uh, uh, Niram for um, um, uh, activating your microphone and talking like that I, I appreciate that um, so um, let's let's uh, go a quick review do I, we're going to do a quick review on what we have talked about last time with respect to um, uh, I'm going to quickly go through the animal and cat and base and point and yada 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 then we're going to go through the virtuals from scratch and and uh, um, uh, and uh, um, kind of talk about uh, virtuality and um, all the good stuff about that uh, any questions before we begin Okay, uh, Nicolay, did you you raise your hand? What's up? Oh, it was by mistake. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All I right. clicked no and it double clicked on the hand as well. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, that's fine. As long as I, I get response immediately, I'm happy because lots of people do it and then they do talk. Anyways, so. Uh, we created an animal. We said we have an animal and the animal can uh, um, get created with a name and it's defaulted to be nameless. Uh, you could access the animal's name uh, or you could set the animal's name using a, uh, a modifier and get it using a query. An animal could act, move and make a sound and that was our animal. Then we said um, we learned that we can actually do inheritance by inheritance which means we can reuse an object with all its uh, information um, so I kind of uh, cleaned up the animal uh, having the animal having a name uh, uh, the same it was before but I brought the query and the accessor for the name into a place we called protected area and we said protected area in a class is is uh, uh, only uh, applicable for inheritance purposes okay so when you write protected it really means private for everyone else but for the children it becomes public so ch children can actually access the protected stuff but uh, others outsiders can't um, so we designed the animal like that so the children of animal are able to set the name or get the name if they need to um, then we had the constructor for the animal the same act move and sound and everything and the destructor just to show what the animal is doing and you know, out of that animal we created the cat we said cat is an animal and we said we always use public in here because protected and private inheritance is too rich for our blood it goes in op345 and maybe later after that so for us it's only public and nothing else so we say class cat cat is an animal that has number of lives so we actually added a property an attribute to the cat in addition to the name that animal carries uh, any questions down to this point all right so then we created a constructor and obviously a cat needs to be named and so we're gonna have the name created and we say name is defaulted to Garfield so it's not nameless anymore it's Garfield and we're gonna set the number of lives to nine by default we are going to override so this is when you have the exact same signature of the parent you override the parents act class it's like shadowing almost it's like a special type of shadowing who can tell me what shadowing is so when I say shadowing what do I mean oh Jan? when I say something shadows what does it mean do you remember Matthew, your microphone is not working. Why nobody tests their microphone when they actually uh, start? 
Okay. Anyone hear me? Do you remember? Shadowing. Shadowing. What shadowing is when we say something shadows something else? Uh, and you're saying the function in another class? Uh, okay, no. So let me just explain what shadowing is. When we go back to scopes, if you have a scope over here, so if I have over here int foo, uh, void foo, void foo, in here if I have integer i, and in here if I have if whatever, and in here I have another integer i, inside that if statement, this i shadows this i, which means if I say in here, i is set to 10, and in here I say i is set to 20, and in here I go see out i, 10 will be printed. Because this i over here has nothing to do with that, and it shadows the outer i. Do we understand what shadow e shadowing is? Yes. Okay, perfect. No, I, I just want to actually ask everybody. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for responding to me. So I, just, I was just typing the poll. So I would say over here, um, are we okay with this? Are we okay with shadowing? Okay. So um, Mahania said no. So um, when you have an inner scope inside another scope, by rule of C language, you can create a variable at the beginning of each scope. So in here, I can say something like um, integer j is equal to 2, 3, or whatever. Then I can say over here, i, j is set to 3. If I do something like this, and I come inside an if statement, and for some reason, I want to do something with say a loop, I'm going to say i set to 0, i less than 20, and i plus plus, and do something in here. If I do something in here, because the name of the variable matches to the name of the variable that is in the outer scope, this will shadow the other one. Therefore, this i is a new i, and it has nothing to do with that one. You change the value of this one, it has nothing to do with the i that was outside. Are we okay with this, Anya? Anya is typing. Honey is typing. No problem. All right. So that's that one. So, so when you actually create an action that matches exactly what we have in the animal, the function shadows the function of the animal. This shadowing in the inheritance hierarchy we call overwriting. So, uh, Overwrite essentially overrides the action of the animal, which means if cat wants to act, the action of animal is forgotten. It overrides it. And the same thing as sound and play, but move was not override. So if you ask a cat to move, it's going to move like an animal. And that's what we did over here to demonstrate. And we also explained that although these are overriding the animal's act and play is act and sound if you still want to re reuse what you have something in the animal and built over it you can always call the animals overwritten uh, uh, functions by explicitly having a scope resolution at the beginning of it and that's how we do it are we okay with this <laughs> All right. So, so now that we are told, so this was inheritance essentially. You when you actually create, and that's essentially your workshop seven. When I give you, it's going to be like this. So you're going to do this essentially, um, and it stops right over here. But next step is the one that uh, is going to be for for the parts that this workshop is not going to cover. Which means all these things are good and nice when you 
use everything with their own name so if I have a cat I have a cat I use a cat as a cat and that's it I don't call anybody with their base class I always if I if you use an inherited class which it's when it's if you use an inherited class with its own uh, properties there is nothing to uh, um, there is uh, with its own property uh, uh, sorry I, th I, I thought so or something is and I lost a train of thought uh, when you use um, an inherited class as is uh, there is nothing to uh, uh, worry about and everything is called as they are which means all the methods that are overwritten will, will actually be uh, uh, be covering and shadowing the parents and they are not uh, the one that we did not override will gonna uh, use the parents as it does over here the problem comes and appears when actually we have an inherited class being called and used using its parents class so I have the animal over here with all the actions and things that it has then I create a cat out of it but in my main class instead of just using a cat I'll use an animal pointer so or an animal reference so I refer to this cat the pepper as an animal or I create an animal in a pointer of a, a, a cat in a pointer of an animal which means the cat Tom over here will only be referred as an animal and running something like this will completely uh, uh, forget that a cat was created and it essentially works exactly like an animal which is not a good thing all the things that we have done to improve they're all lost as you see they're all animal and uh, there is no access to the cat which we do not like we want to be able to improve stuff we want to be able to make things updatable no matter how you refer to an inherited class if the inherited class is referred to with its base some methods and functions you want to always be the latest versions and that's where virtuals come to play do we understand what is the problem here are we okay with this so to solve this problem this is what we are going to do to solve this problem set a startup project Adam Ola, you have a question or you just your microphone went off? Oh, yeah. No, I, I had issues with my microphone, with my system. I'm just connecting. Oh, okay. That's very fine. Sure. All right. Okay. Thank you. So now that I want to want the animal, and, and another important thing that we had over here was actually, let me just bring that up. Another important thing that I had over here was the fact that when you create another important thing that actually is fatal, it's something that causes trouble. It's not just that it's not updated, updatable, but it actually creates memory leak is that when you create a child in the pointer's parent because in the in the parent's pointer when you create a child in the parent's pointer when you are deleting the parent's pointer although there is a child pointed by the parent only the parent part gets destroyed so as you see Tom the cat over here is only removed as an animal and the cat part is not removed at all and that's a big problem big big problem to fix that again will go to virtuality which means anything we want to make sure that the latest version of it is called anything that we want the latest version of it to be uh, executed and called 
is what, what we call actually uh, uh, we, we make it a virtual so in here for example um, I'm I the very first thing that I mentioned is that the destructor we make it virtual which means when you are deleting a parent holding a child when you say animal is the animal's destructor is virtual it guarantees that the latest version of the uh, destructor is called which will be the cats and in here I'm saying I want the act to be uh, updatable I want sound to be updatable but I don't care about move move does not need to be uh, always the latest version it could change so I want to be able a cat to act like an animal if I'm pointing to it l as an animal but the rest I want it to be updatable if that's the case all the actions that are virtual automatically the latest version is called if the latest version is available when we are looking at here as you see I have animal that is A over here. Where is I didn't even print that. Let me just print that thing. So in here I'm gonna let me just bring this one. Uh, I'm gonna actually print a new one. Animal object. no inheritance so I can have an animal object with no inheritance created absolutely no problem okay and when it's when it's running so when I actually run this program okay let's run it So now, ra let me just uh, split the screen in two. Okay, so as you see, obviously when animal is getting created, it's just an animal and nothing else, and therefore oh, this is what we're going to get. So it's going to create rat the animal. Then I'm creating the cat, so it's going to create pepper the animal and pepper the cat. So, and the other one is going to be... Uh, uh, again a cat but this time uh, it is a cat pointed by a cat and now we have an animal pointer pointing to Tom and we have an animal reference pointing to the cat so AR animal reference points to a cat but it's just a reference of an animal we have an animal is just animal there is no cat involved over there let's go through them one by one and see how they work so when I say a dot act it comes to the action of the animal although animals action is virtual but because there is no cat over here and it's only an animal essentially the uh, uh, virtuality it, it is completely ignored because there is no inheritance in here Virtuality is completely ignored and it doesn't mean anything. Virtuality only comes to play when you have inheritance involved. And because of that, obviously, animal acts like an animal with absolutely no problem. So, act ra rat like an animal, move like a rat, and sound like a rat. Uh, are we okay with this? Now... I'm going to come to animal reference. I'm going to come to animal reference. And in the animal reference, I'm going to say, hey, I want Pepper the cat to be referred to like an animal. If I do that, and if I actually call the act of the animal reference, because act was virtual, it will ignore the animal's act and call the latest version of it which is the animal uh, which is the cat's uh, action which is going to be act playful pepper the cat but if I need to I can always directly refer to the animal version of the act in the cat by 
adding the animal class and a scope resolution so I can literally say I know this animal thing is virtual but I want to call the animal one therefore I enforce it and that will call the animal action of the cat are we okay with this for move it does sadly because move is not virtual it will not go to its latest version but it will go to animals move and call it because uh, cat doesn't have a move because it doesn't have a move obviously it falls back to its animal version and then we're gonna say make a sound when it makes a sound because sound is virtual in animal the latest version of it is called but obviously in that one we wanted to make it change the sound so we actually make the uh, we wanted to use the original sound of the animal and then meow therefore we can actually do it and directly call the parents action so if you want to improve the parents action using virtuality you can always call the parents uh, method using the name of the class and scope resolution and then add other stuff to it or like act you can completely ignore what you had and uh, just uh, um, uh, do it as it is and for move you did not make it virtual therefore for a cat to move like a cat it must be a cat and it cannot be referred to as an animal are we okay with this <laughs> Professor? Yes, no, please, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Like as you said, uh, like in this structure, if we uh, use virtual, so the cat, the latest version that is cat will be removed, but and the animal is ignored. But in the structure, we want what? Oh, the animal won't be ignored. Destruction, actually, that's a beautiful question. Destruction is the only thing that when it's virtual, making it virtual make sure everything is called see if the act is virtual and i'll call the act of the cat using the animal pointer it jumps to act of the cat and it's called correct yeah okay but when we are coming to destructor when you actually destroy an animal pointer that is pointing to a cat because the virtual the the destructor is virtual it goes and calls the destructor of cat so it's going to destroy the cat are we okay with this yeah but the thing is that cat contains an animal so calling the destructor of the cat will call the destructor of the animal are we okay with this? Yeah. Oh, all right. So let's continue. I hope I answered the question, right? Hopefully. Yeah. So thank you. All right. So now we're going to, uh, the same thing with the animal pointer. It doesn't make any difference. I have an animal pointer that points to, that is Tom the cat. So it does the exact same thing with absolutely no difference. And you can, again, uh, explicitly call the animal part of the, of the, uh, of the object using the animal uh, reference for it. There is no problem with that. And then when you're deleting C, because C is a cat pointing to a cat, virtuality doesn't count. It's Remember, virtuality only comes to play when you have a parent's pointer or reference pointing to a child. Other than that, virtuality doesn't mean anything. And in here, I have a cat pointed by a cat. Who cares? Everything's going to get deleted perfectly anyway. But when I'm deleting the animal, that's the difference. That's the different thing because it's an animal pointer and it has a cat and the destructor is virtual. Again, it's going to be called correctly and everything's fine. And at the end, the automatic values are going to get called. The automatic deletions are going to get called, which is pepper the cat and rat the animal. Are we okay with virtuality? Dan, go ahead. Did you fix your microphone?
done. I'll send you, okay. Uh, you know that you can change the device of your microphone if you want to, right? So in here, if you want to change the device for the microphone, you just click over here and select another microphone. So these are all the microphones I have. You can select another microphone, see if it works or not without disconnecting. That can be done too if you want to. Oh, there's no problem. Okay, so you tried anything. So Dan, um, uh, uh, you want to type what the what the question is or you want me to... You know, you can actually call to this thing using your cell phone. So if you call this number, so to, so you can actually do this. You can actually join with your cell phone with audio. So this is how you do it. Anyways, uh, can I ask, should we always make this to our... Y yes, yes, yes. Perfect, Dan. Absolutely correct. You always, to be in a safe site, no matter what type of class you are creating, you should always make your class your destructor virtual. Always. No exception. And I mentioned, as soon as I'm done with this session, from now on, any destructor you create, it must have a virtual in front of it, just to make sure in case inheritance happens, there is no memory leak. Do everybody understand this? Are we all okay with this? All right. Okay, so now that we've done this, we have to come to a new chapter of virtuality. And that chapter actually comes to when we actually have when we actually have a scenario in which we know a base class needs to do something we don't know how it's done yet i always uh, uh uh give this example to my students uh, especially when uh, in, in canada we are all from so many different nations in here that uh it's crazy the number of languages that we sk speak in this country so it is always the language is one of the best things that we can actually have examples for so um do we, uh, I gave this example before in class and I'm going to give it again as to, to kind of clear things up. Uh, we said if we are to uh, say we want to create a, a humanoid robot, a robot that represents a human. <laughs> if I want to do that, I want to write an application for it to actually does this, do this for me to actually create a, 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 a human. If I want to do that, it is obvious that a human can talk do we all agree with this so we know humans can talk but and if i if i and this is very important to actually uh picture this when you are thinking about it if i ask and seriously if i, if I ask you guys what do you think a human is like when I tell you a human what comes to your mind when I say human if you want to instantiate a human if you want to create a human what do you think a human being has so what does a human being have comma separated give me the responses like if you want to encapsulate a human what features you think we can put together to encapsulate a human? Go. Comma separated, just write the actions and features that a human can have and do. Don't just write one thing. Like I see one person wrote language. The other one said eyes. One person wrote gender. So human being is not only gender. Human being is not only eye. Yeah, now the now good answers are coming in. Good. Now I like that. <clears throat> Come on, you can do it. Come on, come on, come on. The rest are not saying anything. Okay, I'll close it and I'll and I'll 
and I'll analyze and I'm going to analyze the the answers. So let's take a look at it. And there's going to be plenty of them because not not even two of them are the same. And it's a beautiful thing to actually look at the chat now and just see how many different things people are actually seeing in there. Talking about the human. So human hand, two hands, two head, two hands, two legs. Gender, head, hands, foot, languages, eat, breathe, talk, walk, think, height, weight, hair color, skin, color, gender. So as you see, there are organs, <laughs> could be array of classes, liquids. So as you see, different people have different types of abstractions when it comes to human beings. The one that actually uh, I want to pick up over here is number six. You can see number six over there. Let me see if there is anything else. Actually, I'll go with number number nine. It's easier. Number nine. So let's get number nine as our encapsulation. So number nine is in, is our encapsulation. Human being is something that can talk, walk, and learn. Okay, talk, walk, and learn. When we want to instantiate a human being, how many of these methods we can actually implement? Talk, walk, and learn one of what which one of these things is a definite thing that you can actually uh, uh, say how it's done so if I say I'm gonna say which so the question is talk walk learn and I'm gonna say which one is explainable let's say not explainable not explainable for a human but it does exist and I want you to think about this for a second so This is my question. Talk, walk, learn. Which one is not explainable for a human, but it does exist? So think about the, the question. I create a human being, and I want to, uh, so, and, and it's not, and it's not explainable. Only one person actually wrote the thing right. The rest, I'm going to see that you're going to see that you are all wrong. Only one person had, had answered correctly. Wow, it's it's impressive. It is impressive. Let me just po push it right now. Take a look. This is amazing. Actually, I love this. Um, okay, um, okay. Let me. I'll, I'll. I'll push it. So let's let's now take a look at the answer. So take a look at your. Uh, please take a look at your poll results in the chat. Okay. Uh, one person said walk. Okay, walking is putting one foot in front of the other one and going forward. Is there any human being that doesn't do that? All the same. You put one foot in front of other and you go forward. So all human beings work the same way and I just explained to you how it does. Learning. You're saying human beings don't, you cannot explain how it learns. It's amazing for a student to say that. You're all in college. That's how you learn. So learning is something that you can explain. It doesn't matter what type of a human being you are. Man, woman, Arab, Turk. Persian, Russian, Chinese, it doesn't matter. 
from wherever you are, you sit in a class, things are explained to you, you do it by repetition, and you learn. So you can explain how a human being learns. Do we understand this, hopefully? There is one thing over here, number four, that only uh, two or uh, one or two people actually men mentioned it, I think. So that's the one that you cannot explain. Talk. It is absolutely impossible to tell how, is, how a human being speaks because you have no idea what is the nationality and language of that human being. So talking is something that's due that a human being uh, is a skill that human being can possess, but it cannot, not can possess, does it, a human being does possess, but it cannot be implemented as a human. I am a Persian person, which means if you want to implement my talking, it should be in Persian language. And somebody who speaks Mandarin, when talking of that person is implemented, it has to be done in Mandarin. And if person is an Arab, it's going to be uh, in Arabic. If it's Turk, it's Turkish or whatever. So the action of talking cannot be explained and implemented in a human being. But there is no human being that cannot talk. People talk no matter how. They use sign language, they, whatever, they talk. Do we understand this? Or I'm going to say, are we okay with this? I like it. A couple of people said no. Paul and Kali explain why no, why you're not okay with this. Hello, Fatah. Yes, Paul. Go ahead. Uh, I still not understand why, like, um, talking cannot be explained because, like, um, like. Okay, I have a question, Paul. Are okay. you a human being? Yes. What is your mother tongue? Ah, uh, Cantonese. Cantonese. I am a human being too, right? Yes. What is my mother tongue? Persian. English, I guess. Farsi, Persian, correct? Okay. So. If you want to create a human being and you want to say talk, which language it should speak in? Um, it depends. Oh, there you go. So you can't. When you say it depends, then you can't. A okay. function either executes or doesn't, correct? Oh. Okay. So if we say, like, if I, like, right now over here, what I want people to do is to just type their the language that the, their native language that they speak in i just want to see the variety for it J just to see so what language do you speak in and stay with me paul oh do you speak in and don't tell me the languages you know the the language that you actually sp spoke when you were 2 years old Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> You'll see what I'm going to laugh. Okay. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Actually, I'm going to write it myself too. Okay. A few people don't talk apparently. Uh, and they don't want to say what they, but uh, anyways, it is anonymous. You're not going to see who's what. Don't worry. So you can write anything you want. Okay. So now if I actually run this, this is what happens. Take a look at the chat, please. So these are the languages that we have. And all these languages are human being languages. So essentially when I create a human, I cannot... I cannot implement the talk because there are so many different versions of us. Of, of us. Am okay. I making sense, Paul? Um, but can we like treat it as a argument, something like that? No. 
because how many different languages do you want to put in it? If you create it, you're talking about like creating a flag or set a property. So when it's a language to come out to actually uh, the human being can talk that way. Is that what you're talking about? Um, like set yeah. language to English? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Like a so Paul, with your answer, it means the human being you're talking about should know all the languages and whichever you select speak that way correct oh is that a correct representation of a human being uh sounds doesn't make sense doesn't make sense a human being cannot like the one that you are saying acquires the knowledge of all human beings on planet earth and then you say talk what you are thinking is ipc 144 you are thinking in c not in an object oriented way okay you know what i mean like if i go in iran that is my country and i want to create a human being over there i may need to create a human being with five different languages because we have five different lingos happening in iran but if i go to india and i do you know how many different languages i have to create so again it's all different where you are and which type of dialect. so th the answer to it is that a human being can talk but we cannot still identify how we have to inherit a human being to a nationality which has a definite or to a uh, ethnicity that speaks a, a specific language and then we can actually start implementing language then so for example if i have uh, i don't know a human being and i inherit that human being into a turkish human being then i can definitely put a default language over there as turkish so a turkish human being can speak turkish definitely do i make sense Hopefully, I hope I do. Let me see. Um, baby language is the fault. Yeah, that, that's that's right. I I love the baby language. That, that made me laugh. And I number ten. I don't know what is that. Can anybody trans translate it? I would appreciate it. Uh, wow, seven seventeen thousand. So it's, you see, Navnur is telling how many different languages you have to actually put when you're doing doing it in India. Just yeah, just doing that that. Uh, for an OP perspective, for learn just, uh, yeah, for talk is impossible. That's absolutely right. So, how do we fix this in our coding? Okay, so this problem must be fixed in our coding. We cannot, uh, we cannot just let it like like let let the program go in a way that I'm going to create 17,000 languages if I want to create an, a human being in India. So how do I fix this? This is how we do it. We call this pure virtuality, which means I'm going to create an animal over here and take a look. My animal, as you see over here, so we talk, animals make sound, right? I'm going to say animals can act, animals can move, animals should be able to make a sound, I don't know how yet. So that equal to zero in front of the prototype of the function, of the method, not the function, on the, uh, on the member function, that equal zero in front of the member function tells to the compiler this method will not be implemented now. The animal does not have an implementation for sound in it. There is no sound implementation. An animal is an incomplete class, a class that it represents a thought, an idea, not an actual thing that you can manifest it into a thing that exists. An animal cannot exist as a human cannot exist. For a human to exist, you have to have series of inheritances happening so it reaches to a place that you can actually make an instance out of it. So everything's definite. Now, in our case, it's our animal. Our animal can make a sound. I don't know how yet. Because of that fact, 
the animal becomes only an idea if I actually try to instantiate an animal and compile my code and try to run it you will see that it actually gives me an error telling me that cannot create since it is abstract object of abstract type animal is not allowed I cannot create an abstract I cannot instantiate an abstract class what is an abstract class an abstract class is, is an is a class that holds a pure virtual method any class that carries a pure virtual method is an abstract class it cannot be instantiated unless it is inherited into a solid concrete class and the action that was virtual is actually implemented so a cat implements an animal sound by saying meow and a dog implements an animal sound by saying woof woof so dog and cat are concrete classes that can be instantiated an animal is a blueprint from which you can create concrete animals do we understand this just to see how your short-term memories work I have a question the question is this I want your answers. Type it for me. I said, what is an abstract base class? Not in this case. Explain to me what is an abstract base class. Keep going, keep going. All right. Half of you typed, the other half didn't say anything. This is what we have down to this point. Okay? So when I say what is an abstract based class, I don't mean in my in my example. I mean I mentioned to you so any class that holds a pure virtual method it is incomplete and cannot get instantiated therefore it's abstract based class um, that Vlad you are saying a class that is designed to be just the base for another class no not necessarily you can have a class that is just the base for another class but is not abstract an abstract based class must have incomplete methods in it incomplete in C++ an object-oriented way of saying is essentially must have um, uh, uh, pure ritual methods okay so you have to actually mention it that way I know what you're saying Vlad you're right I understand where you're coming from but that answer can be interpreted in other ways so you can create a base class that is only designed to be base but it's still concrete um, but if it, but um, yeah, so mm, you're right, Vlad. I, I would, I would give you that because when you think about it, if it's just to be a base class and nothing else, yeah. So I, I think you're right. Uh, I mean, it's like, like, uh, like you're saying what is like an abstract base class. So you just like designed like a mainly just an just idea. To be like a base. It's just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So virtual class, virtual pure virtual methods had no difference with regular uh, uh, virtuals other than they're not implemented which means if I come to my main the only thing that they do is that they make animal abstract but everything else will work perfectly so if I create an animal point uh, Nicolai you were saying so it has to have at least one virtual no one pure virtual method pure virtual Nick Nicolai pure virtual not virtual Okay. okay, so, uh, but one is enough to call the class an abstract base class? Yeah, one pure, which if it's, 
if one of them is not implemented it's incomplete right <clears throat> yes Being but it's but it's not completely abstract yeah, like no, one it's of not them is complete. abstract a completely abstract class is called an interface oh okay okay, okay? A, a, mm -hmm. a, a class that is and c++ doesn't make any difference for, between them that's just this is mm -hmm. just object orientation methodology so okay. a class that holds a pure virtual function becomes abstract a class that is that has only pure virtual functions we call it an interface okay thank uh, you. in two seconds i'm going to show you the example for it right so now just the example that we have over here when you take a look at this i have an array of animal pointers i can do that because pointers i can create references i can create but instances i cannot create from an abstract base class so i'm creating an animal pointer over here i'm putting new, a new two new cats and a dog in it and two dogs in it and when my program runs as you see the abstract the pure virtual function sound runs just fine so it creates all of them no problem with that then when the first one sounds it says meow second one says wolf third one says meow fourth one says wolf so each one selects the proper thing as it goes through it and that ladies and gentlemen is pure polymorphism as you see there is no signature change there is no type change change the proper action is selected automatically based on the type animal is pointing to and when it's being deleted it works the exact same way too so all the things that are dynamic will get deleted one by once and everything is going to get deleted properly uh, are we okay with this now going back to what Nikolai said I'm gonna do this take a look let me close all these things close all tabs if an animal is only an idea and nothing more if an animal is only an idea and nothing more we call that oh while being debugging so well debug sorry if an animal is only an idea then an animal especially Nikolai looks like this take a look you see that yes yeah, so it's just a header file it's just a header file there is no uh, uh, there might be like for example if I have overloaded O stream, a helper function to make a sound, if I had something like this o, o stream over here, it could have had a CPP file, but it had nothing to do with the animal. Yeah, I understand. Also, Thank you. this you can write over here equals default, by the way. If you do this, if you write equals to default, it means I want my destructor to be a default destructor. You can just write it like that. But if you if you can if that's new in C++ the old one that the one that works for everything is this one so you essentially write it like this you're saying I want uh, um, I want my destructor to be empty so you create a destructor just to make sure that the children or animal are deleted properly but the rest are all zero which means an animal now can actually uh, let me just see if I have the class diagram for it yeah there you go so as you see i have an animal out of an animal i'm making a pet and out of a pet i'm making a cat so pet is still when you look at the pet let's come and take a look at the pet when you look at the pet pet is actually implementing move and sound but it's not implementing the act so pet becomes an abstract base class where animal is an interface pet implemented few things but action is not created therefore still pet cannot get instantiated it is still abstract for pet to exist I have to actually inherit it to a cat and now my cat has everything and becomes a concrete class co cat is concrete are we okay with this <laughs>
And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what really uh, object orientation looks like. So if I actually, uh, um, so if this is just uh, showing an array of interfaces. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna call run that. Run it yourself later on. I keep putting the wrong thing in here. So I'm gonna say set a startup project. There you go. So now if I actually look at this, so take a look. The beautiful thing about it is that now it is the exact same thing in here, which means like if you take a look at it, th let me just create, a, uh, take a look at the, uh, the, the class diagram for it. So this is what I have now. What I have is an animal. An animal is inherited to a pet and a pet is inherited to a cat, goldfish, bird, and the bird is inherited to a bhaji. So as you see, this is a huge thing that I have with my animal kingdom. Uh, an animal is an absolute abstract thing. There is an uh, interface, there's nothing in it. Pet is a, a, an abstract base class, still not uh, completed. Cat, goldfish, bird, bhaji, they keep going. So when I, when I actually uh, look at the, the source code for this when it's actually running, if I look at the source code in here, you will see in the source code, I can simply create, uh, let's say, an array of three pointers. One is cat, the other one is bhaji, and the other one is goldfish. And I can simply go in here and simply say act, move, and make a sound and do everything like that. I can do the exact same thing with pet pointer. Although pet is not at the beginning of the class hierarchy, but still parent of everything. So an array of pet will virtualize everything after it too, like an animal. But it's your choice and your business logic is decision which one we are referring to. No matter what, everything will work perfectly because the hierarchy of inheritance and virtuality is set properly to make everything possible. Are we okay with this? Now, the beautiful thing about virtuality at this point is that when you create something, an abstract base class even, right at the beginning, you do not need to repeat the code that you need. Take a look at this. If you look at the animal over here, the animal has all the, it's, a, it's an abstract base class, so essentially nothing is implemented. But I'm not, I don't care. I'm going to say I want a helper function that prints an animal. How does it print an animal? Now, as you see, my animal has a CPP file. In that CPP file, animal is not, exp is, is not uh, uh, implemented. It has nothing to do with animal. Maybe only the destructor because I didn't set it to default. But you can even remove that one and set it to default just for the heck of it so we know how it works. So I'm going to call that default. <coughs> now, this essentially means I want an empty destructor. But anyways, we'll come over here now. As you see over here, this has nothing to do with implementation of ACT. It just says any type of animal, when it's displayed on a screen, it's going to act, move, and make a sound. Now, doing something like this, I do not need to implement this for anyone else. My pet doesn't need it. My cat doesn't need it. My goldfish doesn't need it. And all I need to do is to just say, print that animal. Because the action of overloading insertion operator for C out is calling an animal reference, any type of object I pass to this, any type of object I pass to this, it will be passed to a reference of an animal, therefore the proper action for it is called, which means the first one is going to be a cat, the next one is going to be a bhaji, and the next one is going to be a goldfish. So the proper action is picked up automatically because all the actions of the interface animal are virtual and point 
to the proper reference. So again, the uh, interview question, what does uh, what is a virtual function? A virtual function guarantees that the latest version of an action of a method is called in the hierarchy of inheritance. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, I have all these projects over there for you, separately created, constructor, destructors, overloading stuff. Please go through them one by one, walk through them as I did, and try to learn it and come to me with questions. The next time you are coming to class, we're going to have a quiz. The quiz have multiple choices as usual, but it's going to have a piece of program for you to write to. Um, so, and the piece of program, I'm going to create a, a, a small, uh, again, demo, and I'm going to tell you how it's done. So the question that I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a similar question to that one. Essentially, the, I'm going to give you what the question is for the quiz, for the programming part, and I want you to just do it on your own when the time comes. So learn the example that you see in the demo, practice it, and then you're going to do it on your own in the lab. Are we okay with this? Thank you very much. Paul, you're hesitant. Oh, okay, good. So, um, uh, any questions before we leave? Excuse me, sir. Um, yes. Uh, for that, sorry. Uh, so, it's for a quiz, it's, uh, it's uh, only one question or like no 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 we... it, i'm going to give you the multiple questions as usual but there are going to be one programming questions in question in it oh. Yo, okay. MC, yo, yo, coding. Coding. okay paul you have a question no 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 <laughs> yo so no don't no. Have, so mute yourself <laughs> i can hear everyone <laughs> oh sorry 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 no, there's no problem okay everyone thank you very much have yourself a beautiful day, and uh, I'll see you on uh, Thursday. And Thursday, we might have a guest because it's study break. My daughter is also uh, probably my daughter is going to attend our class, too. So be good to her. Thank you. Uh, have yourself a beautiful day. And if there is no question, I'm going to end the session now. Any question one? Any question two? Bye, everyone. Okay, bye. Have a good one. Thank you, Vlad. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Navnur. Bye, sir. Bye, Niran.